Hi, my name's Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And we have two traders uh, in this video, uh, Ebe and Fitz, who are who joined me, uh, joined Trading 180 um, a while ago. And um, I just wanted to get their opinion, their views um, and of, of the mentoring group you know, how they're applying fundamentals to their technicals um, and um, really kind of go over, you know, the, the results, what they've been getting um, in the group and uh, really just getting on his opinion, right? So, right, brilliant. Yeah, so hi, guys. How you how you guys doing? You okay? Yeah, I'm good, man. How are you, Leon? Yeah, doing well, man, doing well. And um, so so Fitz and Ebe, right? I guess I'll speak to um, maybe Fitz first. Uh, give us, I guess, maybe a, a, a quick uh, background on how you got trading as far as how you got into Forex um, and uh, how long have you been trading or how were you trading before you met me? And then the question goes out to uh, Ebe as well. Well, um, it's been five years now. It's been a long journey, five years of this. And basically, um, it started with being at work and then there was this guy that had a chat. So I was like, what's this about? And he said, oh, this is... Um, trading Forex, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Um, so how can I get into it? So he gave me um, like a little explanation of how Forex works and everything. And I was actually quite intrigued. So I go home and I started looking into it. And I was like, okay, cool. I mean, this is something that I'd want to do. So I started researching online about trading here and there. And then um, there, was, um, there was a time I saw, I understand, um, an advert for a seminar in somewhere Milton Keynes because um, around that time I lived in um, London so I remember I mean catching the train going all the way all the way to Milton Keynes and then obviously I mean going for this um, forex seminar and I was like damn I mean this is good I mean and it was all about the kind of monies you could make and all of those things I was like yeah I want to do this mm. so then then on that very day I just decided you know I was going to sign up for this course and I remember paying three grand for it, like straight away. Three yeah. grand. Three yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. That, was my, that was my first introduction to Forex, you right. know. <laughs> right. Was, yeah. But then, but then in, in as much as, I mean, obviously, like we both know, I mean, you can never slate anyone's cause or whatsoever because obviously whatever anyone gives to you, it works for them. That's why they're able to sort of like document it, put it in like videos and whatsoever and then mm -hmm. send it and then sell it out there. I mm -hmm. mean, what they didn't explain or, or maybe what I didn't understand was the fact that it was a day trading course and I was working full time. Yeah. Right. So it wasn't really working for me. Right. You know? It wasn't really. And I was, I, was, I was searching around, searching around and I was making losses. I was blowing one account after another because obviously there was no time to trade. And then right. so going online and then obviously on YouTube all the time, trying one person, trying the next thing after that, that one day, I came across your video and when I came across your video I was I mean I was like wow this is good and I started watching all videos after videos after videos and then one day I remember reaching out to you I sent you an email and I said um mate I've watched a lot of your videos and um mm. I'm interested in this so could you take me on and you were like yeah and then you got back to me sent me an email got back to me and everything and to be honest I didn't have a clue about um fundamentals whatsoever i mean I, I knew a little bit about fundamentals but it was just about trading news so it was um about basically waiting for the news to come and then once you see the reaction based on what's happening then you just obviously jump in based on the volatility that um, this thing comes up you know yeah and, yeah try and get that that's what i knew about for that for me that was fundamentals yeah, that and, and that is a lot of people's interpretations of fundamentals. It was mine as well for a very mm -hmm. long time. Fundamentals, mm -hmm. I guess, was taught online as you go on Forex Factory. Yeah. You sit there, you pick the high impact news, yes. and then you wait for the high impact news to come, and then you either buy or you sell depending on whether it's, you know, a, um, above, it's a positive number or a negative number yeah. um, in contrast to the expectation, right? Um, yeah, so so that's been... Um, so that to, to, to be honest, I didn't even know what it meant. All I knew was, you know, it's high impact news. The markets are going to move. So once it starts moving, you jump in. And that's what I, that's what I was doing. Yeah. Sometimes you make money, sometimes you lose and everything. So yeah. when I heard you speaking, I was like, okay, this guy is going to be better anyway. So let me try him. So I've come to you and then 
now Leon is going on about, and then you need to know inflate, and then Leon is going on about inflation, interest rates, GDP, this and this. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, wait, what's this guy on about? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I remember, and, and, and I remember I was I was with you when 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 we had that group on um on Telegram. Yeah, yeah. that was initially yeah initially on, on Telegram and there will be trades because I had friends who, who had also started trading. I mean, obviously they were technical traders and they'll be taking trades and they'll be sending me those trades like, oh, I'm going to this and then I'm making money. And I mean, Leon's group and Leon is saying, no, this is, I mean, fundamentally we can't take this trade. We have to wait to, and I'm there and I'm like, no, nah, is this the right thing? Is this the right course for me? Is this guy, does this guy know what he's doing? You know, mm. but then it was because I didn't understand fundamentals then, you know. So right. at a certain stage, I had to take a, um, a back step and like, listen, your focus is in too many places. You're mm-hmm. trying to do this. You're listening to this person. You're listening to that person. You're listening to the other person. There's so much. Listen, it's either you stick to Leon, right? And understand what Leon is trying to teach you or else you're just going to go round and round and round. And by that stage, I've been three gen- three years into this journey. Yeah. You know? yeah. So then I had to sit down and now start applying what um, this thing, um, what you were teaching, which was about get to understand the fundamentals and when i started getting into fundamentals initially fundamentals initially i was reading all over the place i was, I was trying to if, if you remember i was coming at you leon what's what, what what is it about money supply and then this and that and then leon will be like no fit stick to what i'm teaching you know it's all over the place <laughs> I because, remember, I remember. Yeah, that. because I, was, I always come back to you and then you'll be like, no fix, stick to the main ones. GDP, inflation, interest rates, central bank monetary policies. I mean, those are the kind of employment, those are stick to this. And I was like, okay, oh, but then this person is saying this, this person is saying this. But then obviously I had to, I mean, sit back and say, okay, listen to what Leon is saying and then just go by it. And that was where the change began, you know. Yeah, brilliant. That was where the change began. Brilliant. Yeah, I remember when you know you 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 started uh, giving me some trade ideas. Yeah. You know, and then and then I was like, yeah, Fitz, it's just about you know you're getting the direction right. Mm-hmm. It's just about then the technical analysis getting in. You know what I mean? But once yeah. you can get the fundamentals correct, you're you're, you're more than likely going to be on the right side of the market at some point, right? And you and you're able to buy low and sell high. So, yeah. Ebe, um, what about you? Um, how did how did your journey start into uh, forex trading? And uh, uh, before, how long were you? Well, how long were you forex trading? I guess before you met uh, me in trading one eighty. My interest started, uh, I think, Lex Van Damme had a show called Millionaire Traders. Yeah, I remember. BBC. I can't yep. remember the year. I think two, 2007 or eight. one of them. Mm-hmm. And I watched the show and the way he trained the people. And Anton Krill was there. And the way mm-hmm. he handled the people, I loved it. I thought, wow, this guy is no nonsense guy. I like people like that. So that sparked my idea to get into trading. Mm-hmm. So I was in junior at that time, so I didn't really spend time and looking for courses. But then after I came out of uni, I paid for a technical course. I don't want to say the name, but <laughs> <laughs> I paid like 2500 on a course. And yeah, I didn't learn nothing, to wow. be honest, about moving averages. They haven't, I, I didn't know, learn nothing. And in my head, I was thinking, yeah. Is this this can't be trading because it's too easy mm-hmm. like, it can't be you that something needs to happen mm-hmm. so i was going through youtube and i discovered some other guy which i paid for his course his course was a bit cheap like 215 i learned fundamentals from him mm-hmm. and someone also i met on youtube gave me anton course for free okay. yeah so i was like okay so i looked at that then that course that I paid, that's where I met Fitz in that group. Right. Right. I met him there and he, I messaged him because normally I don't go through list of people. I messaged him and I was like, hey, what's up? Young boy, blah, blah. We're just talking and we mm-hmm. connected and he, he told me about 
fundamentals. That's not yeah, because that time then I've learned fundamentals with mm-hmm. money supply, um, all of that stuff. And I was like, oh, that's that's cool. Um, new orders, them fundamental lists that mm-hmm. most people have. Mm-hmm. Then fits, and then with supply and demand. Oh, I forgot. I paid for a technical course as well with um, um, that teaches supply and demand. Oh, right. I can't remember their name. Mm-hmm. Then I met another guy that also does supply and demand, but I didn't get grass. I like that. I learned it, but I feel like there, there's something odd about it. Even though it's cool that people, you know, that rally base, rally drop. I understand it, but in my head, I was like, nah, there, there has to be more than that. Even though that works, there has mm-hmm. to be a way that can connect with the structure on mm-hmm. the charts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then... Fast forward, I met Fitz in that group, and then we're talking, and he's like, "Yeah, I know this guy. Is 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 supply and demand way is crazy." So <laughs> I'll uh, check out on him on YouTube. Yeah. That's like a cool. So I, I I watch video. I didn't even finish that video. I can't remember what it was uh, on supply and demand. I just put like 10, 15 minutes. Like, oh, Fitz, okay, connect me ASAP. And I was broke at that time, but I was like, you know what? I'll find the money and pay for it. Like I don't care. I just mm-hmm. need this guy. So mm. then Fitz connect me to you. Then I paid for the course. Then straight in, I went through everything in, 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 in your group. I watched every video, took my time, mm. every video. Then I was like, wow, okay, this, this is the guy. Let me, let me stick here. Now I'm not going anywhere. I just stick to this guy, learn his method, and then, and then, and then trade. Mm-hmm. And this is where I am right now. So I took it serious, like serious when I joined you, then I took it really, really serious because you clear all the noise. Yes. And then just focus on what needed to be focused on. And right now, I, right now, even if I haven't read fundamentals for like two weeks, I can just go in and understand it quickly. Yes. And I know what's up. That's it. So thank you, Fitz, and thank you as well. Ah, you're welcome. You're <laughs> welcome. And um, yeah, I do remember when um, uh, Fitz, you know, introduced... Uh, you to the group I do remember and um you know how how far you've come you know since then it's uh it's been it's been really good seeing you guys you know grow over you know the time period that you've been with me um one of the questions I guess I wanted to ask was um you know we talk about fundamental analysis right and you know people everyone has kind of different um uh, I guess, understandings of what fundamental analysis is, as we've kind of spoken before, some, when we first get into Forex trading, a lot of people think that fundamental analysis is going on to Forex factory and just watching, you know, pressing buy and sell when news comes out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but we understand is obviously a lot more than that. We look at the relationship between interest rates, um, inflation, GDP, you know, and uh, and risk sentiment for example yeah but um but 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 if someone is out there listening and they're saying well you know well why should i learn fundamental analysis it's just a bunch of you know it's just it's just it's just nonsense and i've heard from you know these traders on youtube and tiktok that everything you need to know is in a price chart you know elliot wave works and all of that kind of stuff works so why would you say to somebody what would be what you know the, the advice you would give someone as far as as far as why learn fundamental analysis and i'll give that question i guess to to fitz why what's the benefits of or some of the benefits of learning fundamental analysis um well when it comes to trading like um yeah i, I don't know if you remember me saying earlier on mm. everything works i mean be, for for someone to try for someone to um, obviously um, implement it with their trading, right? And then feel confident enough to document it and claim and make money from this, then it must work for them. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, but with my journey, I realized that, you know, all I was doing was just blowing accounts after accounts because all I was just doing was following technicals, you know? So it took, it took me coming to obviously sign up to you and you explaining the whole fundament, fundamental analysis to me and how to apply it to my trading, you know, for me to understand that for you to have a trade, I mean, for you to get into a trade, you must know the reasons why you are getting into a trade, you know, 
it's just not about looking about, um, at the price charts and then deciding, oh, okay, you know what? Prices are going up, so I'm going to buy. <laughs> prices, are, prices are falling. <laughs> um, uh, the market, yes, yes, prices, te- technical analysis plays a role, you know, but there must be a reason, a fundamental reason to be in that trade. And that's sort of like, if you've done your analysis well, and then you get into that, and then you get into the trade, you've, and you, 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 you understand from the man, fundamental analysis, you've done your analysis well, and then you get onto, and then you obviously open your charts, right? And then the, the technical bit helps us for entries. It's very good for entries, you know, because then you know the kind of levels or the kind of supply or demand zones that you'd want to get into. But, fundament, but fundamental analysis gives you the reason why you want to get into the trade because it tells you because with, with the way we analyze things we we i mean we are aware of what the central banks are saying what they are trying to focus on based mm-hmm. on their monetary policies that's affecting their economy mm-hmm. right so that sort of, that sort of like gives you an overview of okay now this is what they're saying and this is the kind of data that's coming out so based on the data that's coming out right does the data tally with what they are saying? Where are the divergences whatsoever? So it gives, so you, you, you have that kind of reason. And, and then we kind of go through the, um, um, the hedge funds, the analysts, you know, what their reports, what they are kind of saying as well. So it kind of, it, 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 it kind of it, 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 it sort of like validates the same reasons why you want to get into a trade. Yeah. And you get into that trade without confidence. So for me, I'd say that fundamental analysis is giving me great confidence when I'm getting when I'm getting into trades because I know that okay, my line, my, I mean, my line of thinking is exactly what I mean. People that are obviously paid so much analysts whatsoever, you know, that's I mean, it's it's along their their line their their line and mode of thinking, and mm-hmm. plus we're focusing on what the central bank, which actually controls the currency, is yeah. thinking as well too. So yeah. A great point a reason yeah a, a fantastic point have you got anything to add to that ebay so why should why would you say to somebody who was maybe thinking about learning fundamental analysis what would you say it is about fundamental analysis that you know you think is definitely essential what what has it done for you so for example it could be like well you know currency selection for example um it could be things like even the ability to hold trades and things like that so what has it done for for you yeah fundamental has given me the foresight Mm -hmm. to be able to forecast the markets Mm -hmm. three months six months and year Mm. so with that i know okay if i've uh, everything aligned i.e but like fit said following the monetary policy Mm -hmm. following to see if that data meets the narrative on a quarterly basis Mm -hmm. then once i know okay i go to the charts look for area of value Mm -hmm. demand zones supply zones Mm -hmm. if i'm looking to sell Mm -hmm. if i'm looking to buy and if those areas get respected and then they see a reaction I, i put my entry in with a control stop and then I ride the train mm-hmm. ride the train and then I can add on to multiple positions once there's a pullback mm-hmm. right while I'm also checking on volatility because volatility is, is a beast gonna take you out <laughs> anytime. Oh, <laughs> so I always check on it, that. It, it depends on how tight your stop is and where your stop is but yeah exactly yeah, yeah. so I, I I do that and that's it like that's the main thing with fundamentals I mean, it's yeah. very essential to know fundamental yeah and, because and, and let me know about liquidity hunt as well. Because I remember one mm. time it let me know. So because sometimes we may think like, because right now I'll give an example like the euro right now. Mm-hmm. Fundamentally, it's weak, but it's doing a liquidity pool, right? Mm-hmm. Prices keep going up until they reach a place where they'll start selling. I know there's a pullback of selling that came in two, three days ago mm-hmm. that people took that. But I see going to the 1600 before you start turning to come down. I, I ignore the buy. I'm just waiting wow. for the sell to go in, mm. right? Then sell it to 1110 because that's where the analyst has forecast to get to yeah. around that range. So I'm just waiting, beating my time. And I knew the buy was going to come in. And you, since you mentioned that, it made me very careful in certain trade I take and pair selection as well yeah. by knowing the path of least resistance. I love it every time when you say that. <laughs> right, yeah. 
so 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 both of you have really kind of picked up on um, a lot of things so you know to kind of summarize i guess fundamental analysis is things like pair selection right so a lot of technical traders will literally look at you know the whole 28 29 30 pairs right and you know with with fundamentals you're actually selecting the 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 the, the pairs that are most likely to trend because we're basically essentially saying we want to trade the strongest versus the weakest right what determines the fundamentals by looking at the fundamental analysis again interest rates gdp inflation monetary policy risk sentiment we can see whether for example the euro is strong or weak and what the yeah. european central bank is likely to do with the currency through monetary policy compared to for example the us dollar right? What are the Fed doing with interest rates? Are they hiking? Are they likely to hike, hold or cut rates, right? Are the European Central Bank likely to hike, hold or cut rates? And then we can just look at the data, look at their decisions or what they're likely to do by the rumor in a sense, mm -hmm. and then forecast the massive trends, the, the huge trends. And, you know, I've done interviews with, you know, lots of other traders and one trader in particular who was a scalper, I think it was Lawrence, and he was saying to me that he used to go for like 20, 30 pips. You know, he's now going for hundreds of pips. He's made hundreds of pips, like literally in trades, right? And he was like, it's, it's amazing. Do you know what I mean? So, so also as well, fundamentals, and we'll go over, I guess, you know, some of, some of your trades in a sec, but fundamentals also allows um, you to hold trades with confidence, to yeah. see where where where, where a, a a currency is actually a bargain price, um, because we also know that price doesn't in equal value, right? A lot of people think that price, looking at a price chart, that's the value of it, and it's not. Price and value are two different things. Something can be expensive, and something can be a bargain. Do you know what I mean? So it doesn't mean that because price is what it is right now that you know, we've got, you know, that that's basically the value of it. That, that doesn't make any sense. But um, but yeah, good, good, um, good answers on that. So from a, um, I guess, uh, a trading psychology perspective, right? Mm -hmm. How has, I guess, my mentoring and the group helped you with your trading psychology? Because without that, you know technicals and fundamentals are just not going to work if you keep repeating the same mistakes over and over and over again <laughs> or you're not aware of the mistakes that you're making then you know it's going to be very difficult for you to trade technicals and fundamentals right so but being in the group i guess starting with fits how has the group helped you and supported you with actually you know trading psychology um well just to um summarize it mm -hmm. i mean i'm a very confident creator that's it i mean every trade, <laughs> yeah that's it i mean i'm a very confident creator i mean like every trader i mean i take it it's with a lot of confidence because yeah. i mean i know um like you said my pair selection mm -hmm. is right because i'm trading the, the divergences i mean the strongest against the weakest or like you or, or the term that you use most the dog with the least fleas. Dog with you know? the least fleas, yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you know, you know um, just uh, was it last week or two weeks ago, right? Yeah. And um, I have a friend who has, um, he has a group. He has a group of about 5,000 members. Wow. I mean, actually, actually, it's not, I mean, this was in those days of my search, of my going from place to place to place to place. So it was actually a group that, I joined, I paid to join and everything, right? Yeah. So, I mean, me and this guy, we've developed some kind of like friendship. Right. That, man, I've been talking a lot about fundamentals right. and everything. And then just about two weeks ago, he was, yeah, he, he came over to him, boy, he sent me a message like, Fitz, I'm in my group, because he's, he's a pure, he's just a pure technical trader. Right. So he was like, Fitz, um, I'd want to add a little bit of value to my group. So I love the way you always talk about fundamentals. So could you come in? give a short lecture on fundamentals right yeah. and then i was like okay so i was, I was asking maybe i was like should i do it and it's like yeah 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 you can you can you can mm -hmm. so literally i gave this talk on fundamentals explaining i mean obviously our main points which would be inflation interest yeah. rates gdp and 
everything. And I finished and it was like, wow. It was like, wow. And every, every watched the video and every was like, fate, that was really good. I had this guy say to me that, I've, I've watched your video four times. And every time I watch it, I mean, I get more to understand from it, you know? Brilliant. So, <clears throat> so, I mean, so, I mean, you know, when I came to you, yeah. when, and, I mean, those, those things I was like, that's real. know what he's talking about because yeah. just people, people out there. I remember, um, was it two years ago or three? Was it two years ago? Yeah. When we were just shutting Euro, um, sorry, the dollar against the Euro all the yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. And in between, right. Obviously, the euro will rally a bit, make mm-hmm. a pull, um, a, a correction or a pullback. You hear me? Yeah. And and those pullbacks would be massive. Yeah. And we're sitting on our hands, and I'm getting people sending me chats. They're making money, and I'm sitting there, and I'm not making no money because we <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And I used yeah. to be restless. I'm like, nah, this guy he doesn't know what he's talking about. You get me? Mm. But, <laughs> but I mean, to come from that stage to a, a place whereby now I could, I would actually be confident enough to lecture a group of five thousand people on fundamentals. I've that come is, very far. That is fantastic, and I've Fitz, come very far. And Fitz, you can you can attest to this, right? I've always <laughs> said to traders in the group, if you know it you can teach it right yeah correct i've always said that said well, that you ever said that, yeah. right yeah. if you know it you can teach it and the yeah. fact that you're now teaching it and you're showing other people how to use it brilliant you know what i mean because like you said that gives you the confidence your your trading psychology is there and it's a it's a brilliant thing to hear and you know what well done man well done yeah. you know but but you, you know you got you know you got to refer some people to trading 180 as well you know that oh, isn't definitely. It? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but 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 Ebby, how is how has the mentoring been with 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 you and you know the improvements maybe with your psychology so when you came in first of all maybe were you making certain you know maybe mistakes and then you know i mean just through learning and being in the group ironing out those mistakes Uh, yeah when i came through i struggled to take profits right i'm like because i was like oh it it can go a little bit further it can go a little bit further but then i watched your video where you have that profit target range uh-huh. So I always, whenever I do my analysis, I always include that where right. I take the profits mm-hmm. and uh, stop loss and everything. So it's already there. So once I put the pen in order, I don't care whatever happened to the trade. Right. Right. Then I come back again to see, you know what I mean? A couple of days. And that helped me to not worry about taking profits like higher. Just mm-hmm. target whatever, one, two, three, take it, let the remainder run and just chill. Brilliant, brilliant. Right. And 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 just being in the mentoring group and the fact that you can ask questions, questions, and, ask questions yes. and get the ask feedback questions. and things like that, yeah. you know, that I guess is is worth its weight in gold. And it was for me, right, when I was being mentored, because I, I put out a post on YouTube recently that was asking why traders um, felt that they failed or they're not profitable. And uh, the, so far, I think something like 55% say that it's trading psychology right yeah. which which is there obviously that's that's what they think there is obviously you know truth to that but if i've said if if let's say for example you've watched you know a thousand youtube videos and you've watched a thousand technical analysis videos yeah and you say that the reason why you're still not profitable is because of your trading psychology then my question would be to you um, if that is the case, then why don't you watch a thousand videos on trading psychology? Right? Because because all the information should be there, right? For your trading psychology for you to get better. But but traders will do that and still not be profitable. Yeah. There's a reason why. And it's because you're not getting feedback from someone who knows what they're doing, mentoring right mentoring is so important from the right person yeah and so when you know traders will watch you know all the videos under the sun Mm -hmm. it's it's very difficult to actually get you know the feedback 
whether they're doing something right or wrong. So I have a bit of a, a thing, in, I guess, from a psychology perspective, um, whether, you know, there's a quadrant, right? Where, and you've probably seen this, where you can do the right action, the wrong action, the right result and the wrong result. I know, Fitz, you know this as well, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so you've got the right action. Doesn't Just because you do the right action and take the right trade, yeah, doesn't, it won't always equal a profitable trade, right? No. It won't, it won't always equal a profitable trade. Or you can do the wrong action and just take a random stupid trade, yeah, but you can get the right result, correct? Yeah, that's true. Right. Most people will justify their actions by the result, yeah? So what they will do is they will take maybe a poor trade, yeah, but win that trade and maybe have two or three or four winning streaks, right? Trades in a row. And then they think that they're doing the right thing. They're following the process. But in fact, they're doing the wrong action and continuously doing the wrong things will eventually over the long term, medium to long term, in equal to a blown account. Yeah? yeah. Whereas, for example, doing the right action and following the process of things, yeah, doesn't always lead to a profitable outcome. But if you keep doing that process and keep within that process, eventually over the medium to long term, you will see the results. But where traders mess up psychologically is that they confuse the outcome with the process. Yeah. So if they, do, if, they, if, they, if they think that if they win a trade, two trades, three trades in a row, they think that that is basically what I'm supposed to be doing. And then, but from a psychological perspective, they get confused later on because they're like, well, what happened, right? What happened? I was taking all these trades and I was winning at first. I was winning more than I was losing. And then all of a sudden I'm starting to lose now. The strategy doesn't work. And then they start chasing their tail, right? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But the, but the point I guess I'm trying to make is this, is being even being aware of that fact within the group. I guess you'd never heard that concept before outside of trading 180, right? No, I mean, Leon, um, when it comes to mentoring, yeah, mm. um, I've never seen anyone like you. And remember, there was a stage I even said to you, I was like, Leon, for what you charge, <laughs> you <know?" laughs> yeah, yes, I remember when the when 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 I first started with you, every time I come to you, Leon, this and this, this, I don't understand. You're like, okay, fix, give me a few minutes. Next thing, Leon drops a video, next thing, oh, we got two minutes. Come on, I mean, let's let's do a Zoom call. And it was it's always that constant, constant mentoring. It never stops. It's like you are always there, always there for the group. And that's why I like right now the group is actually grown so much to the point where, I, even though like um, I'll be honest, I'm not active because of other schedules and everything within the group. But yeah. yes, when, whenever I have the time, I come in there. And because you've grown the group and so much, there's there, there's people that. I've actually taken up that mantle and role mm -hmm. of helping new newer people that come on board, you mm -hmm. know, and guiding guiding them as well too. And plus, I mean, mate, you're doing what two yeah. webinars every week. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, you, you do the um, this thing, the group calls, mm -hmm. you know, and then the weekly um um um, um the weekly fundamental uh, videos, fundamental and, videos, yeah. and all of those things. Yeah. In between, every day you are dropping. Two, three videos in a day onto the group. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from dropping the videos, you're explaining things to people, going through people's chats and everything. It's like a full-time job. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? So <laughs> yeah, that's when it comes to mentoring, to be honest, there's no one like you. Ah, oh, thank you, man. No, no, yeah, that's true. Because you got so many videos. Mm. Literally, sometimes even you still do new ones, and I'm like, but the answers is there already. Yeah, but I still do new videos and it's good. It's good. So when people come in and like, it's very va valuable community and valuable information that you give. Yeah. Like, like now I'm thinking like an analyst before I actually commit my money, my yeah. capital in the market. Yeah, right? absolutely. So, I've, I've seen, I've seen the change in, in both of you and um, it's brilliant to see. And as you say, you're more thinking like an institution, like a bank, right? You're not just saying, all right, there's a level of support or supply and we're going to try and get short here and we're just going to look for some technical analysis, right? You're yeah. thinking more from a macro level and, you know, it, it, when it comes to things like, you know, managing money and doing things like that, 
you know, to do that from a technical analysis perspective, you know, is 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 going to be very, very, very difficult mm-hmm. for anybody to really say, all right, I'm going to give you my money. Anyone who's serious anyway, you know, if you don't know the relationship between interest rates and inflation and really can you call yourself a Forex trader if you don't know fundamental analysis and risk sentiment analysis interest rates, inflation, GDP, the relationship between. Can you call yourself a, a, a real Forex trader or are you just a technical analysis trader? No, it's just it's just technical analysis. It's just looking at the charts and then looking at what price is doing and then just following and following suit. Yeah. That's all it is, basically. You know I mean? Yeah. I mean, get, getting to know um, price patterns, double tops, double bottoms and wedges and this and whatsoever. I mean, there are patterns and there's, there's times that they would work and there's times that they wouldn't work and everything. But for me, I mean, after coming to you, it's about why not be much more confident about your trades? I mean, right. analyze your trades properly. Give yourself reasons why you get, you're getting into trades. It's what, it's what you're thinking in line with monetary policies, what other analysts, fundamental analysts are thinking. So that sort of like gives you that confidence as to whether to commit your capital or not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah, there's no brainer when it comes to that. Absolutely, but but you know, trying to explain that to somebody who's not, you know, who who's still very technically driven, it's very difficult to explain that. And 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 again, the statistics still show the statistics haven't changed, right? No. Still, ninety percent of traders lose ninety percent of their capital in ninety days. If you go to a broker, they 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 are mandated to show you what how profitable their traders are using that platform and what you'll see is you'll see a number that comes up and it will say you know 70 percent. you know like a little banner that comes up go yeah. to the broker and you know go to ig i work with a broker now isn't it yeah so, well there you go i know, so, I know uh, how it's like <laughs> right so fitz so fitz knows firsthand right mm-hmm. so you know that it's like at least 80 percent. some brokers maybe 75 80 85 percent, depending on the broker it's around that region right mm-hmm. Of traders it's who more, it's who, about who, yeah, it, today about. it's probably more, but maybe maybe they're you know massaging the figures. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> they don't want to put people off, right? That's but true. The, yeah. But the point is, Fitz, I've been doing this since what 2013, right? Profitable since around about 2015, right? right? And the statistics have not changed. If technical analysis was all you needed, there's hundreds and thousands and millions of videos that you can find on social media, all talking about support and resistance, Wyckoff, you know, um, even mm-hmm. supply and demand, right? Mm-hmm. There's so You can get all the information out there, yet statistically, Things have not changed in the years that I've been here trading, right? No. So it's got to be more. There's got to be more to successful trading than technical analysis because anyone can learn technical analysis. It's not It's not the hardest part, right? So, no, it's it's just, it's, you know, why cough? All that kind of stuff is not... Is not hard, but yet statistics are still the same. So, you know, mentoring, fundamental analysis, a winning strategy in the first place, trading psychology, which all you you get in, you know, the Trading 180 group and you guys have benefited from, you know, and you, you guys are testament to that, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So, 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 so let's get into, for example, um, just... One more question before we get into maybe the, uh, you know, maybe you guys explaining, you know, maybe your biggest trade or last profitable trade. Um, uh, I want to just find out maybe like um, Fitz, <laughs> actually, maybe Ebe, I lost Ebe. What was your biggest aha moment? What was your biggest light bulb moment being with Trading 180? So many, but the, um, the, one that clicked my mind was Mahaha Hope moment is mm-hmm. where let's say you've got your fundamental projection, but mm-hmm. then price is moving up. If you want to sell, but price is moving up against right? you, basically. You say yeah, price, against limited. you. Yeah. Then that, that was my ha moment. It's like, oh, so they're not ready yet. They're just <laughs> trying to put money. Yeah. So okay, yeah. I'll just kick back and chill. Yeah. That was my ha moment, bro. Because I've done some fundamentals, however. They have, most of them didn't explain it like that. 
Mm. Do you know? Because that happened last year, the Euro trade, right? Yeah. Everyone was talking sell, 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 but Euro still going up fundamentally. Yeah. yeah. Like it's still going up until when it reached one, two, three, then it yeah. dropped. Yeah. From there. Yeah. And that was where I sold from as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I took it. profit at one one seventeen. Really chill. You see, so it's it's, it's that was my ha ha moment. So thank you for that. That's all I can say. Nothing, nothing else. Brilliant, brilliant. What about you, Fitz? Oh, for me, it was to do with um with the learning basically. Um, <clears throat> when um I first came on, sorry, <clears throat> sorry. Um, so. It was um it was to do with um the fact that you know um, fundamentals involves so much you know so obviously once you start learning something you you there's that bit of you that wants to go out there and then try and find out so much about the topic you know so I was out there trying to read this and I was trying to read that and I was trying to read that and all of those things but then that moment was when you said to me fix concentrate on the core fundamentals I'm teaching, which were interest rates, inflation, GDP, employment, monetary policies, you know, that's sort of like, because because the, the, the thing with fundamental is, it's so broad, you know, and when you go online, there's so much to read. You could be reading from um, Bloomberg, you could be reading from Yahoo Finance, you could be reading from where, so from where, from wherever. But then, when you condensed it into those core topics and said, "Fit, concentrate on these things." And once you concentrate on these things, you realize that it's the same things that um, the analysts are talking about, and the um, um, and the central banks are talking about. And doing that, it like it just basically made fundamentals so easy to understand because now the moment you start reading i mean analyzing and doing your research into fundamentals you know the things that you are looking out for you mm. know and it just makes life so much easier i mean back in the days fundamentals were like oh so what do i do what i, I don't really know what i'm also i mean being all over the place but mm. breaking it down and condensing it it's like that was the magic you know, so for me, that was that was that was my my moment. Ah, oh, brilliant, mate. Mm-hmm. As well, yeah. And before the house, you've condensed the fundamental, the main core ones. I used to pay attention on PMI numbers a lot, mm. right? PMIs and everything, and I'm like, then that since when I joined you, and you mentioned, oh, it's good to know about them. But however, it, it's it's it's. The core one is the main one that can give you the directional purposes, mm-hmm. you know? And then now, whenever there's a news, a PMI numbers, I just look at it. Oh, okay, cool. Then I know where, or if the market is expanding or expansion mm-hmm. or contraction, I, I got that idea. And then that's also part of my ha-ha moments. I forgot to mention that. Thanks, Fitz, for reminding me that. That's definitely, yeah. definitely so, the ha-ha moment for the fundamentals. So, so filtering out the you know the the irrelevant news i guess yeah. right and also as well from a from fix's perspective it's the focus and it's funny because i had you know in today's webinar call that you, you was you was a part of you was in there Ebby. um you know that was one of the first things i said to the new traders that joined right which was focus yeah focus yeah. is is so um I guess the word is, it's, it's so essential because you can kind of get pulled from pillar to post, not just with fundamental analysis, but even technical analysis, but you have to focus, you know, whether, whether you're with me or whether you're with somebody else, it doesn't matter, you know, but whatever you're doing, you have to focus that that's one of the things that traders and people, I guess, just can't the, the, it's the inability or or the difficulty in focusing and having that discipline right to mm-hmm. just focus on one thing and any and just just focus and, and practice and repetition yeah. yeah you know so um yeah brilliant brilliant and um really really glad that you've had so many aha moments so um so yeah we'll get into you know i, I asked you i guess to uh maybe explain from a from a fundamental perspective down to the technicals you know either you know the last profitable trade or your 
biggest trade since you've been with um, uh, uh, Trading 180, yeah? And um, I know, I guess, just because uh, we kind of went over it just before, um, Ebe had the, okay. was it, it was it was the uh, the CAD yen, wasn't it? Yeah. Right, and it was back in um, September, September. September, right, September last year. Yeah. And so, and so, first of all, Ebe, I want you to just break down from a fundamental perspective why you were looking to buy the Canadian dollar at the time and sell the uh, the Japanese yen. Okay, so from the fundamental point of view, CAD was the first country to start to talking about tapering. Right. And then um, their data was improving. Right. So, so, taper, so tapering, just in case anyone who's listening is not necessarily, you know, clear on tapering tapering is basically the reduction in purchases of bonds for example because they're, they're buying government debt yeah so what they're doing is is that they're reducing their government debt buying that's what's known as tapering which should be positive for the currency and number two in terms of risk that may have and decide not to take their trade. They are the they were the country that managed the COVID better than the others. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. All right. So and then I was looking at it, and what the central banks was also looking at at that time was employment numbers getting mm-hmm. better, mm-hmm. and 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 then unemployment dropping. Mm-hmm. So and then they front run everyone. So I was like, okay, let me just jump on this card, and then with the yen. The yen, everyone knows the yen. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it yet. They're just stuck in the limbo for decades. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Stuck yeah. in the limbo for decades. And they just, um, I don't, oh, man, the yen is weak at that time. Yeah. Right? Um, they were in lockdown and then the government was still buying the, the bonds at that time. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, that's a good divergence. Yeah. So let me just go into my charts and then, I remember we had a volatility at that time. So I was just um, waiting for price to get cheaper. Mm-hmm. So I held, I hold on, and then price got around to the 8,500 8, area. Right. 85. So was, during September. Yeah. So the 8,520, yeah, yeah. you said it was somewhere yeah. around here, wasn't it? That's yeah. it. Yeah. 8,520. Yeah. Do you remember where um, roughly maybe your stop loss was? Yeah. My stop loss was like below that week. You know that week on the left? Uh, um, this one here. No, no, the big black one there, yeah, it was oh, below that one there. a little bit. Okay. Yeah. It's a daily chart, yeah? So yeah, it was, it was a daily below, chart. It was, it was below there. So somewhere maybe about 15, 20 pips below that. Possibly. That's it. That's it, below okay. that, yeah. So about, about here. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, yeah. brilliant. Then I took it. And you took that trade. Brilliant. 92.440. That was the merchant move. 0.440. You managed yeah. to pick literally... You know, yeah. dealing the highs. Brilliant. Yeah. Fantastic trade, man. Fantastic. Yeah, I gave Fitz that trade. He didn't took it, so I was laughing at him. Uh, did, Fitz didn't take it. You know. <laughs> you know <laughs> Fitz, you remember when we did our analysis? I was like, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, from, from, from the perspective of, um, you know, you've had the fundamentals correct, right? And whatever, whatever Fitz, you know, maybe hesitated on the trade, is neither necessarily here or there because sometimes it's like for example i might think to myself hmm i'm not too sure about it fundamentally or maybe technically um and then the trade might still go but the main thing i guess is the consistency in the fundamental analysis because even if you don't necessarily jump on you're not going to catch every single trade and trend right but when you do you can have the confidence like you did. You know what I mean? Like how many pips was that? Something like couple, maybe about 400 or something like that. Oh, no, maybe, yeah, 600 pips, 700 pips. Yeah, maybe else. 700 pip trade, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, you know, and 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 it, it's just, it, it makes all the sense in the world. Like I said, we're not always going to get in on the same trades all the time, yeah? But as long as you can consistently know and understand what is likely to happen in certain scenarios then that is really what 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 matters and and and, and a great trade mate i remember this trade i remember this trade 100 percent. i do remember it i actually missed this trade myself i think because um and i can't remember why but i remember this was in in you know the way that i trade was a, was a cpr right so there was a level 
yeah, that was it. And I think, I think, I, do you know what it was? I think I was in another, I think I was in, I was in two other yen trades. So I think it was because I, I couldn't take this because otherwise I would have had too much. I would have been exposed to the yen too much. I think that's, that was what it was, but it was just a choice, you know, that it was, it was basically just take your pick when it came to selling the yen. Right. You know what I mean? But the, the main thing is that, you know, you can't catch everything, but you get the you get the, the 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 area right. You know what I mean. You get the direction right, and you buy low because we understood that price doesn't is not you know uh, 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 correlated to value all the time. And when it's not, this would end up being a bargain. You bought in that you know area, nice trade, seven hundred pips, a nice eleven to one type trade. Fantastic, mate. Fantastic. Um, Fitz, yeah. What about you? Biggest trade, last profitable trade. Oh, you know, you know me. There's, there's always been one trade that I like so much. I mean, one, one. Well, I mean, there's other pairs that I trade anyway, but there's this pair that I kind of like, really like, and a lot of my <clears throat> back in the days when I used to send you chats, a lot of my chats used to be on that, which is the Euro NZD. Euro NZD. I love, yeah. I love, I love, I love, I love that. Pair. Yeah, we hear you. <laughs> we hear you. <laughs> I like that pair a lot. <laughs> I just love that pair a lot. So, um, literally. Since I would say from is it November or there about in 2020, I've never all I've just basically done is sold Euro NZD. Really? Get out, yes, I'll get out at, at a certain stage. Yeah, 20, 2020, right? So it yes. was around it was around November, you said. Yeah, November yeah. 2020. Actually, yeah, I think I, rem- I think I remember this. Yeah, all I've done is just so so the Really? <laughs> that's all that's that. all that's all I do. That's basically look at that. It's it's my bread and butter. It's it's my bread and butter pair. So, so 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 explain it fundamentally then. So fundamentally, obviously, we had um COVID which hit um really hard in 2020. Right? Yeah. But then towards the latter part of 2020, then we had certain economies coming out of, um, so, um, not, not coming out of COVID, but they were sort of like handling the whole COVID scenario much better than everyone. And right. um, everywhere, the markets everywhere were risk off, you know. Yeah. That means, I mean, um, investors were obviously trying to put their monies into safe haven. So, we, I mean, we... We had big rallies in the JPY and then the CHFs and everything. But then this um, commodity currencies, obviously, because um, China, which was um, which um, um, Australia and New Zealand do a lot of business with, they sort of like recovered much better than everybody else in terms of COVID. Yeah. So, I mean, they were still doing into their manufacturing and everything. Their GDP was going up and everything. So. Because this kind of because this commodity um, exporting countries like um, New Zealand, Australia, and um, where so I mean the major part of their exports are into China, are into China. It sort of like helped their economy to grow in the midst of the pandemic, right. and they knowing that they sort of like handled the whole um, COVID um, scenario much better than everyone. Right. So we had that appreciation in their currencies and. In Euro, Europe wasn't doing too well with them um, this thing with COVID. I mean, it's, it had impacted everybody's economy greatly. I mean, we had lots of people dying in here, over here in the UK, in Germany, everywhere, you know. Germany being the largest country when, it, when we talk about a Euro block, you know, mm-hmm. it had a big impact on them and everything. So it was a case of trading, um, like, you've, like you've always thought us, trade the weakest against the strongest. You know, in the name of the carry trade as well to interest rates from these countries were obviously much better than um, Europe as well too because um, th- there wasn't really much going on for for Europe and they had everything going on for them so it was a case of just 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 um, basically they being the strongest I was shutting them against the Euro. Yeah. So I was so, just... so so just to I guess to a quick recap I guess. It was pretty much because I do remember this time as well, like around November. So you had the vaccine rollout, right? So there was yes. vaccines were being developed, right? And I think they yes. were coming out. So we had more risk on because of because because the the market was expecting economies GDP to start mm-hmm. growing, right? Yeah. So it was basically a case of which economies are going to grow fastest and which right. ones are going to which ones are going to lag behind. Yeah. 
and at the time the Europe were not handling the um the the, the virus very well whereas um New Zealand had gone into pretty much zero covid you know policy yeah. mm-hmm. and they were pretty much you know ahead of the curve when it came to GDP right so yeah. there was light at the end of the tunnel yes i do remember this um you know succinctly so there was divergences between you know GDP on the on the um you know growth who was going to return to you know the recovery phase sooner who was lagging behind yeah and uh, there was that there was that divergence there right? there was a massive divergence and yeah if, massive if you, divergence. If, you, if, you, if you go back and you check you check the gdp um figures around those times for um, yeah. um, for new zealand and then even for china because a lot of things are going to china as well too. I mean, yeah the gdp yeah. on on i mean their gdp was just increasing and increasing you know and yeah. they were doing so well so it was yeah, that, because, that was my that, that was that's been like the biggest trade for me because it was my bread and butter. Brilliant. I was just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. So it's <laughs> yeah. literally like you know every, every always says, I mean, every time I bring up a chest, like you're gonna bring up Euro and <laughs> <laughs> And that's and and again, you, you raise a fantastic point, right? Because because ultimately there's two things going on here, right? Mm-hmm. So what traders will generally want to, you know, will, will say is, is that, well, you know, um, fundamentals allows you to understand, you know, value, first of all, the fact that mm-hmm. the New Zealand dollar was a bargain up here. And we know that for a fact because prices went down. That's, yes. that's, just, that's what it is. Now there are periods, there, there are periods that are going to, that are going to happen where you might get a week or two, right? So between yeah. March to maybe April, there was a pullback. Now, traders will say, well, you know, they will try and go long, anticipating, you know, trying to play both sides. But why do that when the path of least resistance is just to the downside, right? That's no, it's just to. when the pullback is just giving you better prices to get it, that's it. cheaper prices. You know? Exactly. It's just giving you cheaper prices. But where traders mess up is that they try to pick. And I was saying this again today, right? One of the hardest things to do is to consistently pick turning points, mm-hmm. right? Probably nearly impossible to do it, you know, to a, to a consistent level um, if you're doing, you know, highs and lows, right? No one yeah. tells you this. No one tells you this. This is the reason why support and resistance trading on its own, on the face, doesn't work. Yes, you can see in in hindsight, yeah, yeah, you know what? It worked here, it worked here, it worked here. But when you try and do it consistently and buy and sell at highs and lows, or what you think are highs and lows, it's very, very, very difficult to do. Yeah, to do consistently. So eliminate, first of all, what the direction that you don't want to trade in, yeah? So focus Mm -hmm. on just the direction that you do want to trade in. Which the, the, the trade-off to that is that all right, on the up when, when prices are going against you, or not even against you, but when prices are pulling back, you're not gonna make money on the pullback. Fine. Yeah. But it's not about making money on the pullback. It's in fact just looking to buy, like you say, for cheap. Is that a cheap area? Yes, the market agrees. Excellent. Made some money there. Does it pull back to that cheap area there? Yes, it does. We'll make some money here. The more times the level is touched, as we know. The more the, the the less it becomes a bargain. Yeah. So we buy we, we buy the New Zealand dollar there. Cool. But then if it doesn't work out there, there's a stop punt right there. We'll get involved there, right? We just do <laughs> shorting. So when the market pulls back, you keep shorting. And then the market pulls back again, comes back to that area there. There's a little bit of a stop hunt right there on yeah. that level. You just keep shorting. Do you know what I mean? It's just short and 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 fits. I'm so glad because I've told this to people for years. I was shorting the euro dollar for about two years. Fitz, you was there when yeah, I was, I was there. It. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was there when I was doing it. There's no need to keep trying to buy and sell. Right? You can it, the, the amount of money you make is not dependent upon the amount of trades you take. I could take two trades, make six hundred pips this month. And then compared to somebody who's taking 60 trades and maybe might only break even, right? It, it, it's not correlated. The number of trades you take is not correlated to the amount of profit you make. Just because someone's taking and day trading and taking five, six, 10 trades a day, doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. Yes, they got more opportunities. They're taking more opportunities, but are they taking the right, opportunity are they taking the market's opportunity is the market saying yes 
that is where we think is a bargain. We know with supply and demand strategies, with our fundamental analysis. Stop we, Yeah, stop hunting. C- CPR. CPR. We do it on a consistent basis, right? We do it on a consistent basis. And we've been doing this for years. Fitz has oh, been yeah. with me for a few years. ebay has been with me for, for a year or so. You know what I mean? And, you know, you've seen me do it year in, year out, right? And you're doing it year in, year out. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys... I want to probably wrap up there and I just want to say thank you for doing this, for proving to people that, you know, trading 180, you know, you can turn your trading around, right? Because many times it's it's really kind of sold as a scam, right? At some point it's like, you know, trading is a scam, boys is a scam and there are are scammers in for it. The scammers everywhere, right? Everywhere, yeah. But 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 the actual making of money and being profitable in trading, yeah, is possible, correct? It is possible. And achievable, possible. yeah. And it's achievable. Yeah. You know, it's achievable. And you can do it with hard work. And you guys are proving that. The other guys that I've been interviewing, they're proving that. And um, brilliant, man. I just want to say thank you for your opinion. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Your experience. You've, you've, you've and, uh, changed us. 